I'm sorry, I'm a mute. Oh, goodness. I've been talking the whole time, friends. <laughs> Thank you for saying something. Um, yeah, I, I clicked the button. That That's the mute button. Pro streamer here. Uh, so we're going to spend most of the time talking about Project 2 stacks and queues. Um, again, the, the stack and queue themselves is not really like the focus of this. We're, we're using it in the project to do the simulation because it fits our model. Right? A, a Python list will do all the things a stack and queue will do. We saw that. Right? We, we don't need anything fancier than a list to accomplish these goals, but if it fits the model, it's going to make sure we don't do things we're not supposed to do in our code. Um, so I think it'll work out well. Right? You can only take fries off the top of the stack when you go and, and serve some fries. Yeah, technically, I'm sure you could like scramble them all up, but then you're going to have like our old fries mixed up with the fresh fries, and when customers get your fries, they're going to say, what happened here? This is gross. Right? So like, you probably don't want to do that sort of thing. So um, our four friends, Burgers and Fry Shop, right? I think that's, a, that's our idea here. And then something we, we haven't touched on a whole lot here. Um, I want to spend a little bit of time, too. One of the, the goals that we have in here is UML. So I think we did UML for our project with the Trek Wars. Right, with this idea that we can go and just kind of draw out our picture. Oh, where did it go here? Uh, in here, isn't it? My goodness, am I going crazy? Test libraries. Wasn't it in here? Is it not in here? Really thought one of these things said UML. It does not. Hey, KMP. Okay, I am making things up then. It was last semester. That's what it was. And we didn't end up actually drawing any of the diagrams because we didn't do anything in Visio. That's what it was. Uh, but you know, even, even spending some time with some UML is useful. It's not just something we do to check off the box and say we're done, right? Uh, it's, it's actually a useful tool when designing software. And anytime we spend designing, it's going to be worthwhile because we know what we're doing before we just start writing our code. So we'll call it Project 2. We'll kind of stub some things out and, and think about how we want to design these things. Um, so again, I like doing stuff in Word because um, it's, it's easy. Like the great tool, Visio is a really nice tool. There's online tools. We'll do the, like the actual fancy pretty things here. Um, for our purposes, like this is easy enough for sketching. We don't need to do a whole lot of extra fancy things here. So we have a couple different objects right, that we can think of. Right? Anything that's a noun could be a class. It doesn't mean it has to be a class. It just means it could be a class as we're looking at these things here. Um, that's probably too large. So the first one, right, is essentially our drive through. That's the drive through itself, right, really is that collection of cars. Could be its own thing. That's not super interesting here, but really it's it, like what attributes it would have here then would be a queue of you know the the type of car right a queue of car class so we have a, a car class as well and methods would just be right give me the front one or add a new one right so it's it's essentially serving as the queue so you can like add car given a car right or we could get the front car or take order from the front car i mean anything we want to to have here we, we could you know take order or really order could probably come from the car you know front car returns a car this sort of thing. Right. So, some ideas. And then we could have a separate class for then car. Nope, so that's in the wrong spot here. Um, so car is another noun. That does not need to be this large. But then car as a class, right, the kind of attributes it might have, right, it's going to know the number of fries ordered, number of fries ordered, right, probably as an integer. Uh, oh, sorry, so this is uh, we're, we're backwards here. So this would be like cars. Here's the attribute. Would be a type of queue, right? Um, we would have a number of burgers ordered, ordered here as an int. And again, you don't actually need classes, right? That the idea that they help us solve problems because we can talk about it in more of a natural manner is very useful, but you can solve problems without them. Right? It, it just it, it helps us kind of in our 
walking through a solution to a problem and like picturing this step by step by step. If we can talk about nouns, it's much more familiar to us. So uh, I'm a very big fan of object-oriented programming here, and I like objects. It's a, it's a different way of thinking about, so we want to practice that using it as a tool here. So we know how many fries we ordered, we know how many burgers we ordered, we know what time we arrived, our time arrived, right? Time arrived, so like, I'm two minutes into the simulation, or three minutes into, the, eventually it might be like a real time, but this is just some X number of minutes here, right? probably is an integer. We would then have a time order was fulfilled, fulfilled or something like that, as again, as an integer, so that we can go and calculate how long did this car have to wait from the time they pulled up to the time they got their burgers and fries and drove off, right? And we're assuming probably less than, you know, two, three minutes, people are happy, right? I think if, if you can get in and out in two minutes, three minutes, you feel pretty good about yourself. Um, that, that's pretty quick service. Um, so if we know how many we ordered, we also probably know how many we've been given. So this is, you know, because we know what the problem is here as we're looking at our, um, where did it go here, our assignment, right? A car can order, uh, here we go, uh, zero to eight burgers and one to eight fries, right? So if we can only cook six burgers at a time, we know it's possible the car shows up and says, I want eight burgers. If we had any available, we'll give them the ones we had available, and then we'll start cooking more. If we had none, we'll have to cook six, wait three minutes, start cooking more, wait three more minutes, so it'll take six minutes to get them their burgers if we have none available. Right, and that's sort of this optimization problem is how many do we need to have ready to make sure we're getting cars through the drive-through fast enough so they don't drive off on us. Um, so we could, once I hand over a burger, say, hey, I got two that are fresh, hot and ready. Usually they, they put them in a bag, but we, we, we'll just say we give them to the car here. So maybe we could say the number of fries received, right, as an integer value. And then we could also know the number of burgers received. Burgers received. So the car itself could be tracking this value here. Again, that it doesn't have to. It could also be like we have the drive-through person or something there like has the order prepped and order order could be something that can be filled or not. We can hand over an entire completed order. That might be more complex than we need. Uh, I think it, it's easy enough for a car to do it. And if, if you want to put it somewhere else, that's okay. It'll still get the job done. Um, so those are private attributes then. Right, so then public methods, things that we can do for cars, like take order, right? That would return really like a, a tuple of int and int, or like we could have take burger order, take fry order separately. Um, that's probably easier here, right? So if we do take fry order, would return an int, and you know, take uh, burger order, would return an int here. And again, we're just kind of designing. We're thinking ideas out loud right now, and this stuff can change as we start writing our program. We want to think about, as I interact with the car, what are things I'm going to do with it? And then maybe we'll give burger, 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 given the burgers as an int, right? And I can give fries, and fries as an int here. I can get total uh, was it order or wait time or something? I guess wait time. Get an int back. That'll be, you know, the time my order was fulfilled, time I arrived. Hector, thank you so much, my friend, for donating those bits to the Student Scholarship Fund over at the University of Michigan Dearborn College of Engineering and Computer Science. I didn't even need a big breath for that. That was awesome. Getting better at that. Um, so when we give them burgers, we give them fries. If their order's full, how are they going to know what time their order was done then? Right? We, we could either also tell them what time we gave them the, the burger and the fries, and then they could set it themselves, kind of like we did with the, uh, the planes and trains. Right? We told them, hey, here's the time. Or we could then have like a check for is order ready or can drive off and like pass the time here. You know, I don't know, like can or I don't know, is order complete given a time as an int here. Right? And they could return a, a a yes, no, a boolean here. Right, we got options here, and there's not necessarily one right way we want to tackle this. It's, it's any way we want to kind of design this here, as long as it makes sense that the car object would do this. Right, we want we want all the attributes of a of a noun tucked together, encapsulated together in the class here, 
and things that make sense. So what we don't want to do for car is put things in here like how many burgers are on order and how long it takes to cook the burgers that we've put on a grill. Car has nothing to do with that. Like car doesn't care what's happening in the grill or on the grill here. Car just knows how many burgers it wants and how many you've given it, essentially. Right, so there is still some, some bounds and some limits to, to how we want to design this, but it is very flexible. Right, we can go all sorts, of, all sorts of ways. So if car can do all these things, then car is pretty set. Right, uh, so it's probably okay so far. And then let's see, what else? Uh, how did I get an extra? Oh, all right, this is, I guess, why you shouldn't use Word. Because delete the row. There we go. Maybe Word's not the best tool for this, but it's okay. It's quick and easy, usually. Right? And then, so we have the drive through with a bunch of cars. We have the car itself. And then we need, what, the the restaurant? Or the, the four friends thing? Sure, we can have four friends, burgers and fries. So attributes of this, right? It has the grill, which is really, like, a list of burgers or a list of something, uh, whatever we want to represent here, right? We can put up to six burgers at a time. We can put fries in our oil here. So it could be its own class for the grill. It could be its own class for the fryer, or they could just be properties of our restaurant here. Again, it depends on how we want to tackle this. And if it gets too complex, we can break it out. But if we want just the grill here to be, this is just a, a list of burgers. Sure, we can do that. We can have the, the Oil? I don't know. What do, you, what do you call that? The deep fryer? Yeah, deep fryer. Fryer? Is there a Y in it? I-E-R? And there's probably a list. I don't know. It just says it's not spelled right. Deep fry? Deep fries? I don't know. It's fine. Right, so I can add things to my grill and I can add things to my deep fryer. Sure. Right? Depending on what we want to add here, we can either add like the time they're done cooking or the time we started them cooking. And we, you know, we've got lots of options on, on how we want to be tracking that, but that's fine. Then we'll also have the burger queue in the fry stack. We'll have a burger queue, which is, you know, a queue and a fry stack, which is a stack. Sorry, I'm using the wrong variable names here. Uh, underscores. Got to keep our convention going, right? We could have the queue or the stack of these types here. Now, Burgers and fries have different expiration dates or expiration times. We could track them as a separate class here, but it, again, if we, we think about what makes them different here is just when they're expired or maybe even how long they take to cook. So it could just be here's a food and one of the attributes is time until expiration, right? And we just put that food in the burger stack because we're not, we're just simulating here. It doesn't necessarily need to be its own thing here. So maybe we have a, a food class here, but just a generic food class. We'll call this one food, right? And so one of its attributes is like its name. We don't even really care what the name is, but just if we wanted to, we could keep things straight here, um, like it's a string. And then we could have a um, expire expiring at minutes as an int. So like when it's done cooking, now we'll have this food. It expires at 30 minutes because it finished cooking at 20 minutes. Any way you want to be tracking this, it's an option. Expiring minutes. Um, it could be tracking the profit as well, right? Because we know when we make this much profit, right? So we're selling burgers for $2 each. It costs us a dollar for them, right? So we make a dollar if we sell the burger. We lose a dollar if we have to throw out the burger. Right? Same with fries. So we could have a, a profit amount here, right? Sure, that could be, that's probably a floating point number, right? Because it, you know, fries are 50 cents. We can't, unless you want to deal with everything with pennies, but you could um, just to do with integers, but floats are probably fine, right? So then in that burger queue or fry stack, we can just put food, right? An instance of food, one with burgers and the expiration date, one with fries and the expiration date, right? Again, kind of, if they're similar here, we can use one class to represent different types if the only thing that's different is their attributes, which the only thing different between fries and burgers in, in our model is their expiration date and their price. So it makes sense that we just need a single class. No, there's nothing wrong with making two different classes for it, but it's more work than we need to do. Right? We're still trying to look for those opportunities to kind of have the shared attributes in common here in a single class. 
Okay, so what else do we have here then? We, we know how much things cost us. We can take cars orders. We can do our simulator. We've got our burger queue. We've got our fry stack. We can cook things in the oil. We can cook things on the grill. We know when things expire. Is that, that maybe all we need here for how long it is to go? Um, oh, so we also want some of these values here, right? So this, um, how many burgers ready? How many burgers or fries ready do we want? Um, cars can also have this drive off time. Where did that go? So if they waited for more than 10 minutes, they drive off. Um, so really it's not a pure queue because a, a car can drive off from anywhere in the line. For our purposes, we're going to say, hey, if they get to the front and it's been more than 10 minutes, they're going to drive off because they're, they're, mad, they're mad at us. Like they waited too long. And then it costs us an extra minute, essentially, because then we'll wait for the next cycle till the next car pulls up. So, like, it's an extra penalty. But, sure, um, it, it's not a perfect model. So then things that we might have, then, that might be part of car, right? This might be max time waited or something. Max time to wait to order as an int here. And now, this is probably better as a constant, not necessarily as a class level attribute, right? Because not every car needs this, or maybe some cars are different, right? Depending on the model, when I pull into a drive through with the kids, it's really, really hard to drive off and say, sorry kids, we're not getting McDonald's, right? And we've waited 15 minutes, it's too long. If I drive off, bad things happen, right? So, but again, as, as a, uh, you know, a, um, a class level value is probably better. So we'll just say max time to wait. Here as you know a constant all uppercase value here so we'll define this at the class level not at the instance level. UML doesn't do the greatest job of showing those apart so just kind of our naming convention helps with that right the all uppercase of these constants essentially. Um, so we have the max time to wait and then we also have the in our four friends our goal number of burgers that are ready and fries that are ready. Right, so those are probably uh, constants here that we'll be changing here. But this is our, you know, uh, goal burgers ready as an int, and the goal of prize ready as an int. Right. So this will say, hey, if I have none available, let's go make sure I've got two fries ready to go, two orders of fries ready to go, that sort of thing. Um, Right, and that's one of the things we're going to tweak in the simulator to see, hey, can we make more money? Can we have essentially less people drive off if we try and keep more of them ready? Or is that going to cost us more in waste here? Uh, and this one-third chance is probably tweakable as well. Um, probably we'd put that somewhere. Um, I don't know if that belongs to any of the, any of the classes here, if that's just in our loop. Um, we'll see. Um, and then food, you know, get, gets for these, you know, get methods, get dot, dot, dots. I don't know. Um, for the burgers and fries, how do we interact with it, right? Well, we, we need a method to like add a burger to the grill, right? Add burger, burger to grill. We need a method to add fry to fryer, right? We need a way to get or take burger, burger, or serve burger maybe? I don't know what we ever want to call it, serve burger. Uh, and a method, not server, serve fry. Or fry uh, some some ways of that we want methods to interact with it here. So if this is all that we had, right? Let me uh, I zoom it out just a teeny bit. That's not too bad, is it? Right? So is that a little small or is it doing okay? Essentially, what we can do then we can say, okay, let's. So what's going to happen in our code before we even write any code? We can say, hey, all right. So here's our loop for 120 times. Right, and we know, I mean, we can make this look as Python-y as we want here, you know, for minute in range 120. Sure, I mean, we can write some Python-looking code here if we want with our pseudocode. It can, it's, it's our just step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process. It can look as Englishly as, as you want, it can look as Cody as you want here. Well, what do we do? You know, we say, you know, one in three chance, car pulls up, new car. Right? That's maybe the first thing we check for. Sure. Uh, maybe we add a new car to the car queue. And then we would add a car, right, if there's that chance. And, and again, we could get this more details if we want. Or we could just leave it at a high level. Right? And then we'll say, if there's a car, you know, get order. Get order. 
And then once we have the order, we want to uh, serve um, from queues, from queue and stack, and then cook more, right? Whether or not it's for their order or for to get to our goal, right? So this is kind of, you know, whether or not it was for the order or that we wanted to get to our goal amount here. And then we can see if the car is ready to pull off, right? You know, can, can a car pull away? Can a car pull away? Right, and that's kind of the loop. Right, I mean the, the cook and the, the serve is a, is a little bit trickier here, right? So I guess we probably also need a step in here before maybe before we serve, we would uh, check the. So maybe we'll put in here. We want to check grill and prior. Right, if we check the grill and the prior, anything that's ready, we can add to the burger queue or the fry stack. Right, and then we can get the car's order, serve what we need to serve them, see if we need to add more things to the grill or the, the fryer, and then see if the car can pull away. Next minute. Right, so we can kind of just you know, step through, step by step by step, and we can get this as detailed as we want to here um, as we go. Let's see, can I add another page? I want like this reading view. I lost all my sketches when I do that. That's awful. There we go. That, I kind of want this like side by side view. I know it's real small looking there, but I want to like have this other page right here. So then in our loop then, right, so this is the, the main loop here. There's the for loop. Is that not turning white? Am I not? It was white before, wasn't it? Was it always black? Is that going crazy? They're really writing, writing black on black? It was, it was white. Yeah, it was. I messed it up. Now it's not even writing at all. Draw mode. Okay, I broke word. That's fine. That's that's okay. I'll go back to PyCharm here. All right. So if we want to write some classes out, then right, we had. Let me zoom that in. Sorry. All right. Class for car. All right. One of the things we know car needed to do when we had an init here was generate the random order. All right. Self dot burgers ordered. Again, you know, we would generate some random number here. I'm just going to put a value in right now just so we have some code. Self.fries ordered, this sort of thing. Um, you know, just just you know, whatever. We can sketch it all out here. And then we could add in the other methods, right? Um, take order or take fry order, or take burger order, these sort of things. We can start flushing it out. And then once we have all that done, then we can do that loop, right? We can say for minute in range 120, let's go do those things, right? If my random dot rand int, uh, import random, rand int, what is it, random dot, yeah, rand int, uh, three, right, will give me, oh, that's inclusive, really, so uh, two would be zero, one, and two, right, or uh, one, one to three will give me one to three, here, there we go, if one to three is a one, then we get a new car, Right, we take our drive through, we add a car to it, right? Or uh, what do we have here? Our drive through, add car, given a new car, right? You know, drive through, through dot add car, given a car, right? They would generate that random order, that sort of thing. Sure. And again, we can start translating it from the pseudocode into the sketched out classes. They don't, classes don't need to be finished, they just need to have methods here. Then we can start calling the methods to kind of put all the pieces in order and see if, if it's going to go, and then start filling out our methods. All right, so maybe we need some of those. We'll have a class for car. Uh, define an init. Um, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to all this later. And then we'll define a, what do we like, get fry order. Um, I'm just going to return zero for right now, and then define get burger order, turn zero for now, and then is, it, is order complete, uh, given a time, right, you tell it the time, first to return, oh, we'll just return true, I don't think it matters really right now, true, and then the car class is going to have the static value, right, the max time 
waiting, like what do we say, it was like 10 or something, 10 minutes till they were going to drive off. So this at the class level, not a self-value, this sort of thing. Um, and, you know, just kind of go through, put the functions out here. They don't need to be completely done yet. And then they can go. So then my drive through, well, does this really need to be a class here then? It doesn't even really need to be a class. Like this really is just a queue of cars. So I don't think we need an entire class for it. It doesn't really do anything else for us. So we just need a drive through is a queue, right? Well, sure, we don't even really have the queue here. So we'll just do a list for now. And we'll have our drive through, and that's really an append. We can append a car to our drive through. Isn't it? Come on. Drive true. <laughs> Okay. Oh my goodness. Through. That's. I was wondering why. Like it didn't. It didn't recognize it here. So we can append a car. Sure. So now we we have a car in there, and then we can go and check our. So we need the restaurant, right? We need our four guys, four friends, burgers and fries, burgers and fry, shop, or whatever we wanted to call it here, right? And then it would have its init, init, and that would do some sort of thing here. Um, that's right, we just like pass for now. Otherwise, it won't compile or, or uh, not compile, I won't even be able to read it. And then, what do we say this four friends was going to have? It was going to have a, um, a list for the grill, a list for the fryer, a queue for the burger queue, a stack for the fry stack, and some goals here. And I can just use lists right now. So, maybe we do have those different values. So, we have self dot the burger queue is a list and the self dot fry stack is a list and the self dot um, grill is a list and the self dot um, fryer right was a list it, we, we, it's better with stacks and queues I just don't want to go copy and paste right now right? This, that sort of idea this is all just uh, sketched out code nothing nothing real proper yet okay then add burger add fry serve burger serve fry this sort of thing sure Sure. So we could have a function if we're going to serve fries or serve burgers, or we could check to see how many that we have available. Right. Fine. Get number of burgers in queue or something. Sure. Why not? Return the length of self.burger queue. No, you shouldn't have to stay, change the stack or queue class at all, uh, GG Hockey. Uh, the stack or queue just, they exist. Um, the way that we use them then is in our classes. Right? And again, you can do this, this, sure, we can get all sorts of numbers here. Uh, we can see, hey, do we, can we serve any? Right? Or what was our, our next step here? We said we were going to check the grill and the fryer. So if we had any available. So we needed that food class. Uh, no, that wasn't even, yeah, we needed the class for food. Right, it was going to have an init method. And what did it have? Like a name, a time expired, or expiring, and a profit number. So if that name's the name, so if that time expiring, expiring is the time expired. These should all be private too. I'm sorry, I'm being lazy with my underscores. This profit. Sure. So now we can make some food here. So we can check our grill. Right, so our um, a check grill for done burgers or something. Burgers, given the time. Right, we can go through each item for our item in the grill. If item, I don't know, equals time or something. I don't know, whatever we're like putting in there to track then. Right, then we can take our self.burger queue. We can append a uh, food. Right, its name is a burger. Then burger, the time expiring is time plus ten for burgers. Right, I think we said ten minutes for burgers or something, and the profit was a dollar. Right, so we could do this now. Again, this is not proper here because we can't then now we can't now remove it from the grill. Right, so we want to loop through a slice copy of it here. Right. Because we loop through a copy, then I can remove from the original, right? And then I can say self .grill remove the item, right? And it'll take that first item that it finds off. 
And this this looks really funny, but remember you can't you can't remove items as you loop through a list, this sort of thing. Does that ring any bells? That can be dealt with lists, so um, loop through the copy of it to take them away out of the, from the original. Sure, that sort of thing, and then do the same thing with our prize, right? To see if they're done. Sure, right, and then like we have a add burger to grill or something. Uh, we probably need to know what time we're doing this, right? What time? So then, if the you know the length of my self dot burger grill uh, grill is less than six, right? Because I can grill six at a time. We probably need anytime you have just a hard coded number in here, we probably need a like some sort of value here. So this is probably um, max burgers on grill. Uh, it's much better to have values here. Right, your max burgers on grill, then just magic numbers in here. So if we had that, then I can take my self dot grill and I can append a time plus three or something. I don't know. We could add another, you know, minutes needed to cook a burger or something. I don't know. We can uh, any sorts of values that you want here. But um, if you can help it, you don't want to have. Um, just numbers all over the place. So like, oh, the one here and the 10 here, these are all things that should be variables, not just random numbers here, right? for, for a good habit, a good practice. And then they're easier to change later on too. So when the health code tells us, oh, really, you can keep your burgers on for 15 minutes, I can go change in one place rather than everywhere in my simulator. But this, this sort of idea, we can add them to the grill, we can check them, we can take them off, right? And then we just kind of sketch it all out. We start adding items to our loop here and trying it. Does that part make sense? So then our four friends, burgers and fries, probably also would track its profit, right? And as we, we sell the burgers, we hand them to the car, we can add the profit. If we, if we are checking the grill for done burgers, or when we we're serving the burgers, if it's expired, we throw it out, right? That sort of thing. So when we're serving a burger, serve burger, um, again, needs to know what time it is. So a lot of these depend on time, which is kind of funny. Uh, but you have to tell it what time you're doing this. So we can check to see hey, if the self.grill, or I guess if the, the length of self.grill is greater than zero, I've got some burgers, then I can go do something. Right? Or if it is zero, we just return false. I didn't I didn't serve you anything. Otherwise, then I can go, let's check the first one here. Um, or we can go like expire all of them while um, self dot grill of zero dot was it time until expired or something time expiring time expiring is less than the time we need to remove that item from our grill right so self dot grill dot pop zero right and and I guess both of these really right. The length is not zero, and it's so if we have an item in the item in the grill here. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the, the burger queue. Burger queue. That's what I was looking at, not the grill. The burger queue. So if we have an item in the burger queue and it's expired, get rid of it. If we don't have items left or it's not expired, we're done. Right. I guess we could probably do that first then, right? You know, when we go to serve them, pop those off first. And then, hey, if the length is zero, there's no burgers to serve. Otherwise, now we can go serve a burger. Right? Otherwise, then, I know it's not expired, and I know I have something in the grill. We're going to pop that first one off and return true. Sure, we served you a burger. Right? This kind of makes sense, kind of checking, hey, if we have something there in the queue and it's expired, get rid of it. Oh, then we should track some profit here, right? Track profit loss, that sort of thing. Yeah, we can, we can do that, right? So this can have a self.profit zero. When we serve, if we lose it here, self.profit minus equals the uh, dot profit. Take that food item off, take the profit, subtract it here. We've still popped it off. Uh, otherwise, profit plus equals. 
popping, pop, popping it off here, right? Um, does that make sense? I mean, just, just some ideas here for how we could go through some of these things. Uh, lots of different ways of designing it. Does that cover everyone's questions? You know, I've talked with like four or five different people now, which is, I'm actually really happy. I like talking to you folks um, and kind of working through some of these things. Um, I always wonder what's going on, like, because we've got 15 people or so who are still pretty active, and if I hear from nobody on the assignment of the lab, I think that's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. Um, still, still trying to figure that out. So we'll see. With a uh, with a lot of questions, I feel like I don't know. It, it's it's a vague problem to solve because there's so many different ways you can go about solving it. But this is the kind of thing like. Hey, let's let's make a model. Let's simulate something. Let's see if we can't find something out here. We can set up some some rules and parameters, and we make the computer do a bunch of things. And we'll figure out if we're making money or not. Right? We didn't even make cars pull away yet. We haven't even got that far yet with the the, the time the car would pull away and, and whatnot. But you know, we we sort of got through some of these ideas for the project, and you can see it just kind of build on itself as we go. Right? Not too bad. We uh, about 70, 70 lines of code or so, just for sketching out some ideas, and we're like a quarter of the way there now, maybe, maybe maybe a third. Right? We haven't done anything with fries. We just did some burgers, but they're they're all pretty similar. That sort of thing here. Um, so if you really wanted to, the next crazy thing you can do is this serve burger method. The only thing that's different, right, is the the burger queue. I guess the fry stack we interact with differently. It might be a little bit trickier, but you, you might be able to have like a single serve food item and have the the stack or the key. I don't know. It's probably fine. So serve burger, serve fries. Um, but you can go nuts with trying to have less duplicate code if you want. Right? This sort of like time expiring thing, but fries were to have to pull off the top of the stack rather than the back of the stack. So you feel less confused or more confused now. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Waiting to see if anyone in chat has any ideas, any thoughts. So the next thing we had to talk about was our maps, right? I think we're on maps. Let's double check. Less confused. All right. Thank you, Casey. Yes, we're getting to maps. So we finished up our priority queues, right? The min queue, the max queue. I'm looking at maps, hash tables, uh, skip lists we don't even really talk about. It's more of an advanced topic. They're interesting, but we don't, it's nothing we need to get to. But a map here, right, is our dictionary. How do we map one value and associate it with another? So how do we build out these dictionary ideas here? And we use that by do creating these hash tables. Now, we're not going to get into the code itself. Can I write with white yet? No. We just close this out and restart it. Don't save. Let me try one more time, see if I can start drawing here. Let's try it. Okay, right. So all of our different O of n, O of log n, and O of 1. Right? These are some of the performance metrics we've looked at so far, right? On average, average is the most important one, right? I mean, worst case is, is good to know. Hopefully, you don't always get the worst case. Best case, you almost never get, so we don't really care about best case. Um, so average time here. Sorry, I'm not seat it has no padding like at all this is this is not a fun seat so when we looked at our regular lists a lot of things were o of n not everything right when we looked at adding an item so if we had so far we had array based lists array lists we had linked lists and then we had the um, the tree was uh, not, we didn't get super far into the tree, but the priority queue here. 
So the priority queue only works with sorted data, right? The linked list and array lists don't care, right? We could put the data in sorted if we wanted to, but the, the structure itself doesn't matter. So like the priority queue is special because it only works with sorted data. The array list and linked lists as well. So in terms of adding a value, right, on average, it was O of 1 for adding an array list. For a linked list, it was always O of 1. Or I guess we should say this was like append, right? Append. And for a priority queue to add something, that was log of n, right? Because we would have to add it at the last spot and let it bubble up to see where it needed to go. So that was O of log n for that, right? To remove or uh, pop off the end here, right? We'll just call it remove, essentially, from array list to take the last item. Sure, that was nice and easy. O of 1 to take the end, to take a linked list. Uh, o of 1 again for the priority queue. O of log n. Right, we'd take the last one and then we would swap it with the last item and let that one down heap its way to where it needed to go. Uh, so appending and removing were easy because we're only ever dealing with the end of a, of a section here. Um, to add at a given index then, right, to add or maybe insert, right, that was O of essentially n, n minus k uh, which is still really like O of n. We don't really care too much. Same with the linked list, O of n minus k, essentially. Because with an array list, we had to shift k items down to make room for it. For a linked list, we had to get to k, and then we could add it. So both cases were still pretty slow, and it just didn't apply here for a priority list. You can't say you go at a particular location because it's a sorted structure. It manages that by itself. So some of these necessarily don't, don't really apply here. Um, so that's insert. So to delete an index, same idea, right? O of n minus k, O of n minus k, because we either needed to shift a bunch of items to fill that empty space or get to that kth index and remove it here for deleting at a given index, right? So removing at the end was fast. So the structures give us the ability to add or remove from any location but it's slow to get to those locations to do, the, to do the shifting. Now, we saw the linked list gave us better performance if we had a position. We said if we had a position that was, you know, k index k in to the list, I could add or remove before and after it in constant time. Right? That wasn't something we could do with the array list. So this was in insert before or after. It right? didn't apply here, didn't apply here. We saw that was an O of 1. That was pretty good for our linked list, if we were doing it with the positional linked list. right? So we had some cool things there. But uh, And then finding an item. right? So if we wanted to uh, find a value, right, or if it like contains, you could say, hey, does this list contain? I'm running out of space here, unfortunately. Uh, contains uh, would be O of n. Right? If the list has this item, I have to look at every single item in the list. Maybe it's the first one I look at. Maybe it's the last one I look at. Maybe it's in the middle one I look at. Maybe it's not even in the list at all. I have to look at all n items here. For a priority queue, it's destructive to do that, but we could, but it would still be n items, essentially, right? Um, we could pop out all n items and see if we found one that matched. Uh, we'd have to put it back together in a queue. So, like, it doesn't really apply to priority queues. Not, not really that sort of idea here. So like sort of there, but I'm going to cross it off. Okay. But what we get when we deal with a map and a hash table. So to add an item, right, to um, get an item or to remove an item. To add an item, we can do it in constant time. To get an item, we can do it in constant time. To remove an item, we can do it in constant time. Now the problem with a map here, this is for our map, is there is no order. Order, right? So there's no indexes. So you can't insert at an index or remove from an index, right? So there's no structure to the data where our array list, the sequence and the order of the position mattered, right? The first thing you added was the first thing. The 10th thing you added was the 10th thing. 
So with a map, with a dictionary, we can't have any sort of ordered fashion to it here. But what we get then is this huge performance boost. Everything happens in constant time, assuming there's a big star here, right? Big old star here, um, the uniform distribution. That's a big old hand wave here, but generally we can assume some sort of uniform distribution and we say sure, and we just kind of smile and nod. Um, what that means is the values in which you're adding we can uniformly distribute across the hash table. Isn't always the case. Um, and one of the interesting things with maps here, um, specifically, is there's no duplicates. Right? When we deal with the Python dictionary, right? if I say, hey, dictionary key of Eric, assign an A, and then dictionary key of Eric for a different Eric, assign a B, I just got the B, and the other Eric has no grade or we now both have a B, like, uh, you, you, there's no duplicate handling. Um, and that'll be important when we start looking at how we actually implement this sort of thing. Um, but if we don't have duplicates, it's pretty easy to say we're gonna have some sort of uniform distribution because I can spread these things out and there's no duplicates. I, so one of the things we're gonna trade here, so this is, this is time complexity, right? When we talked about there's time and there's space complexity. The, the chapter we mostly skipped the time that it takes to do something in terms of n, and the space that it takes to store them in terms of n. So the time complexity here is really fast, right? This is, this is good. The downside with a map is the space complexity is not as good, right? With our stack and our queue and our link, uh, like those sort of things, we took exactly n items when we did it just right, especially with the linked structure. There was no extra additional storage space where we were like twice as large as we needed to be. Um, so the space complexity for a map and a hash, hash table here, we take up more space than we need in order to achieve this uniform distribution so that we can do our magic hand waving and say, look, everything's really fast. Okay. So what it does is we are going to take an internal array here. This is our storage here. And we're going to size this to some oversized amount. And there's all sorts of different metrics and measures for how large you want to be. Um, generally, we're going to say, let's go with like, um, what is the, the number? We'll just say twice as many as our items. So if I have 10 items, I want to have a storage of 20. If I have 20 items, I want to have a storage of 40. And, and again, it, it doesn't need to be exact here. Uh, we, we have some sort of tolerance and range that we want to do here. Uh, but what we do then, so we'll say these are all the indexes. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay. So if we wanted to store something in a hash table, what we do is we take the key here. So remember, when we deal with dictionaries, we have a key and a value, that map. There's a key and the mapped value key and the associated value here. We're going to take the key. Everything's based off of key here. And we're going to do this thing called a hash. We're going to take a hash of the key. And what that does is hopefully ensure that we get a uniform distribution. Again, sort of hand waving. Um, like if it's a string, it does some sort of funny thing with all the character Unicode values. If it's an integer, it's just its integer value. Like nothing special has to happen here. Um, if you're dealing with custom classes, we're going to look at what we have to do to generate our own hash method and figure out how we hash these things here. Uh, but one of the keys for hashing here, it is immutable. So every time you hash an object, you need to get the same value back out, the same key back out. So for a string, right, strings are immutable. You can't change a string in place without generating a new string and be a new string in memory. So every time you hash a string, you'll get the same value out. So what we do is we're going to hash the key, and then we're going to modulus that by the length of our data. So whatever the hash gets to be, some big, long, ugly number, we don't care, I say, oh, sure, I have 10 storage locations here in my array. Let's modulus that by 10. Now, every single key you ever give me, I can fit in a location between 0 and 9. Right? So if we, let's just grab a we do, no, my Windows key is broken.
this is like the little uh, command prompt. So if we hash Eric, we get this. I don't know. Sure, whatever. Um, if we do it again, hash Eric, we get the same number. Right? That's the important step. No matter how many times I hash, I'm going to get the same number. Right? So I'm going to take that hash of Eric, hash of Eric. I'm going to say mod 10 is a 7. Right? That's the ones digit. I get a 7. So in spot 7, then, I'm going to stick Eric. So if you give me the key of Eric, if you want to add something here, it's constant time to hash it, modulus it, and throw it in there. Right? Still constant operations. It doesn't matter how many items I have, assuming uniform distribution and we have storage two times our items. And lots of hand waving here. It's not always the case. So this is if things go well for us. Right? Who else do you want to hash? We should hash. Who else? Hash my son Jeb. We'll, we'll put him in here. Sure. I don't want some big ugly number. I don't know. They'll do that. Mod 10. Seven? I feel like that's a three. All right. What do I know? Sure. Seven. Well, uh oh. I already have something at seven. What do I do? Got a couple options. There's a couple bad options, and there's a good option. The book starts with the bad option. So the bad option is, oh, there's already something at 7. Let's put it at 8. Jeb. This is called linear probing. I'm just going to go linear, just go to the next step and say, oh, there's something there. Let me go to the next one. This is bad, um, and we'll see why it's bad later, but don't worry too much about it here. Um, we can get another value, get another name and hash it, another name and hash it, another name and hash it. So to get those values out, constant time, or to add the values constant time, to remove the values, I just hash it, go find the value, remove it. Now, if I remove Eric, it makes finding Jeb harder. Right? If I remove Eric, now if I go hash Jeb, it says 7. I go look at 7, there's nothing at 7. So you'd have to leave a marker saying, there used to be something here, go look in this linear approach here. So like, you leave something, and it says, oh, okay, I should go look for the next thing. Go look for the next thing. Go look for the next, and, you know. That's a little ugly here. It's doable. But we could find it eventually. Um, a, probably a better approach. Um, one of the, so one of the strategies is the size of your internal storage should be a prime number. Um, a mod 10 here is not a great way to get a, a good distribution of hashed values. Right? It's just, it just doesn't work quite as well. So using, using a prime number, usually you'll get better modulus values. Again, that's probably more complex than we care about. Uh, a different approach then, instead of the linear probing, is more of a geometric. Like you just jump 2x and then 2x and then 2x and 2x and 2x and further and further and further to try and spread things out. Like if they're all clumping together at 7, that might spread them out better. Um, but the, the best approach that we're going to look at is you make a singular linked list. So you make each of these essentially a bucket here, and you'll drop items in the bucket. And you remember that linked lists are really fast. So if there was something at 7, we'd say, hey, that's Eric here already. It has no next. If I were to add another item here, I'll say, okay, let me add a new first thing here. So I'd add Jeb. His next is Eric, because it was there. Eric has no next. If I were to drop another thing, I would put them being first. Their next would be Jeb. Their next would be Eric. Right. So you make this singular linked list. So then if I wanted to go find or delete something, I can go, okay, let's go find it. It hashes seven. Let's look in that seven bucket. Is it the first thing? No, let's look at the next thing. If the next is not none, let's look for it. If the next is not none, let's look for it. So you can get in a bad shape if everything you're hashing ends up with the same hash value. It's possible. So that's why this uniform distribution hand-waving thing says, generally when we hash things, you don't always end up with the number seven. Right? Generally. And, and most of the time that holds true. So there's some cases we need to be careful about. But usually you'll get you know something over here, something over here, something over here, something over here, over here, maybe two of them over here, and then, oops, we need to resize. When we resize... It's essentially the same operation as the array process. We need to go copy all the old values out. But what we have to do is we have to go rehash them all. 
because now I have a new array storage of size like 29, it's 29 prime? I think 29 is prime. We'd like, hey, let's go to the next doubled prime number or something like that. Take the values out, hash the key, which still it takes a lot of time, but on average, we're going to amortize it out so that it's still constant. Because right? we'd only have to double, essentially, you know, every time we have to double. Um, so a lot of cool things work with these hash tables. We haven't done any code for it yet. Um, so on Thursday, we're going to talk about the project, and then we'll get started on hash maps here. Um, and I think, so the, the project will probably take another good half an hour to go. I think we can build out most of the hash map, and then we can tackle it lab on Tuesday. Um, so I do, though, have an ultrasound appointment for baby uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. I don't know how long that's going to take, and it's actually really far away from the house, uh, about an hour out from the house. So there's a chance we might not start right at 3.30. I'll probably be back. I mean, even if it takes an hour, we should be back home by 3-ish, but like everything always takes longer than I expect it to. So if we don't start right at 3.30, probably by 4. Uh, if I can't get started by 4, I'll just shoot you guys a message and say forget it. You know, you don't need to sit around and wait forever. Um, but should be able to get back by 4 at the latest. I, I think I could be back by 3.30, but again, we'll, we'll see. Um, but I won't be here on campus because it's uh, an hour north of my house. And my house is already like 35 minutes north of campus or northwest of campus. So um, I'll plan to just be remote Thursday, probably starting at 3.30, maybe 4 o'clock. Um, and we'll go from, I'll post a reminder in Canvas on Thursday as well. Um, but we found out a couple weeks ago, baby's a boy, which is cool. So this ultrasound is like uh, the, an anatomy scan or something. I don't know. There's this whole process, and I've never we've never done it before. So like this is this is kind of interesting, uh, despite it being baby number seven, so or kid number seven. So um, should be a lot of fun. So yeah, we'll we'll work on that, and then for lab, we'll kind of finish up uh, making sure our hash map works, and we're going to try it and compare it to a dictionary. Is we're essentially rebuilding the Python dictionary which is not very interesting or exciting or entertaining, and there's nothing we can do with it that we can't do with the Python dictionary. But understanding why it performs the way that it does and how it performs the way that it does is one of those like fundamental structures and understanding it hopefully will help you make better choices when you write a program, what is the best data structure to store my data performance-wise and space-wise, right? looking at all these complexity things. We're pretty spoiled, our computers are really powerful, but when you work on smaller systems right, and you have constraints, that sort of thing matters, or if we're doing anything at like million x scale, you don't want to just be throwing away extra memory. So you want to be as efficient as possible uh, when we get to that sort of scale. Okay? All right, yeah, I don't want to start any code. We're not going to get very far. If we were to start, we only have about 10 minutes left or so. Um, so why don't we wait till Thursday for that? We'll go over the project, and then we'll go over maps, and we should be all set, okay? All right, so I'll commit this code, uh, the starter code. You're welcome to use this um, if you like this sort of idea for the project um, classes and, and whatnot here. Um, if you've already gone down a certain road and it's going to be too much trouble to change, then don't. It's okay. It, it, it doesn't have to be object-oriented here, but I want to show you this is one way we can use this approach to solve problems because generally it's going to make things easier for us conceptually to say, okay, I know this class has these attributes. I know I can interact with it certain ways, and that's how we want to try and start dealing with software because uh, it just... Uh, it's a little more natural for communication. And then when we go back and look at it, hopefully some of those steps make sense. Um, if it gets the job done, it gets the job done. That's fine. And then um, someone reminded me, I always said her name wrong, um, but I have a rubric for it now. I didn't have a rubric, rubric for the assignment before, so it's out there. So it's the 10 points here. Uh, so two points for doing this 120-minute simulation loop and tracking your total profit. So if nothing else, you loop 120 times and, and report some profit, profit gain or loss, two points there. Uh, the cars getting added every one-third chance every minute with a random number of burgers and fries in their order, another two points there just for this car portion. So trying to build this out piecemeal here. Tracking the cooking of our fries and burgers, right? That's what I said, hey, this is the grill and the fryer. Two points for that. The burgers and fries expire as they're supposed to. So before we serve them, we need to throw them out, track our profit and loss that sort of thing. Uh, the burger queue and the fry stack are managed correctly. So as they're done cooking, we add them to their queue and stack. When we serve them, we take them off the queue and stack. Two more points there. And that should get us the 10 points here. I think we hit everything in the list. Um, right? This, this running it with different values here is, you know, that, that's for our own, like, hey, can we, can we tweak this and do better? And because it's random every time, it might not always be 
giving us the most money. So maybe we want to run it like 100 times with this given value and 100 times with this given value and average things out. And once we have it done on Thursday, we'll have a little fun with that. And you can actually make a graph and chart it uh, and do sorts of cute things. So uh, we can go from there. All right. Well, thanks, folks. Um, if you've got anything else, let me know. And happy to, to get you unstuck if you get stuck anywhere. So we'll, we'll get moving here and talk on Thursday.